Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about quadrature signaling uh, in frequency domain. First, let's review what we've learned uh, in the previous lecture. Uh, in the time domain, a complex phaser uh, can be plotted in the three-dimensional uh, uh, space uh, with time, uh, real, and the imaginary axis. So we know that uh, phi1 and phi2 are the uh, angle of the uh, two quadrature signals. And uh, when you increase phi1, the quadrature uh, signal basically rotates in counterclockwise direction that way. And uh, likewise, if you make the phi2 more negative, uh, the this uh, quadrature signal will rotate uh, in the clockwise direction. So secondly, let's look at the mathematical expression uh, for quadrature signals. Uh, we have J representing the direction uh, of that uh, vector and uh, the one half in the denominator represents for the magnitude of the uh, vector and the e to the minus j2 pi f naught t. Here f naught is the frequency uh, and uh, the minus sign in front of that j represents uh, that it is a negative frequency. So the only difference here in the frequency domain is that we would like to represent this time axis with a frequency one but we keep the real and imaginary, imaginary access unchanged. In fact, in the world of digital communications, uh, we don't really call uh, uh, them real and imaginary. Uh, we call them uh, in-face and a quadrature face instead. And you will see a why in a second. So any real signal can be depicted as a collection of an in-phase and a quadrature phase component in frequency domain. By a real signal, what I really mean is that a signal that realistically uh, exists in the real world that we can generate, we can measure, and we can observe with the appropriate, appropriate instruments. Take the cosine wave uh, as an example. Uh, in the frequency domain, a cosine time domain cosine wave can be represented with uh, a combination of two uh, impulse. Uh, so these two arrows are the impulse response of the uh, cosine waves, or one at the positive f naught, one at the negative f naught. Again, the this. This is the frequency axis, not the time axis. It's uh, similar to the time axis, but to get from time domain to frequency domain, uh, this signal needs to go through a Fourier transform. So the frequency axis is pointing out of the page, and uh, you can see uh, the, uh, the negative F0 and the positive F0 components, uh, they are symmetrical. Similarly, but uh, also different uh, in tiny details for a uh, sine wave. Uh, first, you may be observing that the excuse me. So the face between a cosine wave and a sine wave, they are exactly uh, 90 degrees apart. So here, this is 90 degrees, and this is 90 degrees. 
but the zero crossing for the sine wave happens at 180 degrees versus the zero crossing of the cosine happens at 90 degrees. What this really uh, means is just that the sine, sine wave uh, for this particular period, it's uh, the zero crossing point leads the cosine wave by 90 degrees. And uh, uh, the, the meaning of that in the frequency axis is that uh, when we shift the face or we change the face by 90 degree, what we're really doing is that we're rotating the um, we're rotating uh, this vector um, along the frequency axis. Uh, and this is the frequency domain uh, 3D representation of a sinusoidal uh, impulse response. Uh, again, you can see the negative frequency and the positive seek frequency. Uh, they're on the opposite side uh, along the frequency axis. Uh, also notice that for a sine wave, unlike cosine wave, uh, which occupies the uh, which occupies the plane uh, constructed by the real and the frequency uh, axis. The frequency response of a sine wave occupies the plane that's perpendicular to that plane. And uh, uh, um, the impulses, they're pointing to different directions. And we call them um, conjugate symmetrical. So let's take another look at the Euler's identity, which we've covered in the time domain video, but here we want to uh, scrutinize it in the frequency domain. So this is the frequency response of a sine wave. And if we multiply that sine wave by J, and what we will get is J times sine two pi F naught T. And in the frequency domain, what really happened was that we're rotating the frequency response in the counterclockwise direction by 90 degree. Here you have to do a little bit mental uh, visualization. So this is a 90 degree angle and we're rotating it that way and uh, vice versa. Imagine this is a, a 90 degree angle and we're uh, rotating that in a uh, counterclockwise direction. So you see previously the sine 2 pi f naught t occupies, uh, a, uh, occupies the horizontal plane after the rotation, uh, sorry, in previously the sinusoidal uh, wave, the sine wave occupies the vertical plane. But after the rotation, it occupies the plane that's perpendicular to the previous plane, which is the horizontal plane. And uh, let's get back to the cosine um, wave frequency response. It occupies the uh, perpendicular, sorry, it occupies the, ho the horizontal plane. And because now the j sine 2 pi f, f naught t and the cosine 2 pi f naught t, they're occupying the same plane, we can actually do algebra. We can add them. Remember the component here on the uh, negative side of the frequency, it's, uh, it's the opposite direction compared to the negative component for cosine wave, but they're equal magnitude. So they actually cancel out. But the frequency component on the positive side in the J cosine versus the frequency component on the positive side for the uh, cosine wave, they are in the same direction and equal magnitude. So the, the result of the combination would be doubling their amplitude and uh, maintain the same direction. So this is the a three-dimensional uh, meaning of the Euler's identity, uh, e to the j 2 pi f naught t equals to cosine 2 pi f naught t plus j times sine 2 pi f naught t in frequency domain.